Buffalo Jeff Lounsbury back at the helm for the Toronto Maple World Leafs. Series champion Rob yeah, Butler. So the Leafs are going to get some help in the bullpen here with these signings. Yeah, five miles an hour for Timochko. How good was Bohenis Alvarado last season? Yeah, the Leafs love what Sam Green brings to the table. So got the nickname Shohei Ohaji, and rightfully so. We posted it, and it was like light. Oh, uh, was it ever, Jeff? That's the voice of Jeff Lounsbury. He'll be stopping by later in the show. But first, we want to get you up to date on some of the new signings on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we'll highlight a couple of them right now. And it's two infielders. Uh, talk to Jeff Lounsbury a little bit about these guys later in the show as well. But Cole Murchison, who's playing right now, he's playing at Cal State, the Monterey Bay Otters. That's then the CCAA, the California Collegiate Athletic Association. That's Division II baseball, but... Uh, you won't mind the Division One, Division Two thing when you see the numbers that Cole Murchison is putting up this season there in Cal State, hitting 380 this season in two seasons, playing in the playing NCAA baseball. He's put up a 349 batting average with a sparkling 407 on base percentage as well. So Murchison has been tearing it up this season. I think the Toronto Maple Leafs are uh, excited to see him in a Leafs uniform. He's playing first base. Right now, out in Cal State, and I don't know how open that position is going to be for the Maple Leafs this season. Uh, I think uh, what happens with Jordan Castaldo and how much of the season he decides to play and how much he's going to be coaching and DHing will factor into that. But either way, I think this is a bat that will definitely get into the lineup very regularly for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Charlie Towers, who is a guy that we've seen but not in a Maple Leafs uniform, his rookie season was last year. He's playing for the Hamilton Cardinals in the Inter County Baseball League. Before that, for the Fort McMurray Giants out in the Western Canadian Collegiate Summer League. Uh, he's a fantastic defensive player, and the, the real uh, utility for the Maple Leafs is that he can play all over the infield. He can play shortstop, third base, or second base. So he can slide in uh, into any of those spots. And as you may know, if you've watched the Intercounty Baseball League, depth is extremely important in the IBL. He played for the Hamilton Cardinals last season, and we don't think we really got to see his full potential this season and how it how his skill set is translated into the Intercounty Baseball League because he only played half the year, got into 24 games with the Hamilton Cardinals. Okay, Jeff Lounsbury is going to be on the other side, but before that, let's take a look at some of the exciting moments from 2023 for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Go with 21 RBIs on the end. Up the middle is the center field for a base hit. Picked up by Ryan Dos Santos. He's coming home with it. The play at the plate, and he is out! Oh, what a throw from Ryan Dos Santos to cut down Gary Balls, and we remain scoreless. Eric Deska and the Toronto Maple Leafs love it. What a throw on one hop to the catcher, Ryan Burnside. Tell that should be coming out at some point this week. Getting his thoughts as this one's hammered. Deep to right field, and it's way out of here. John Salazzo, the Orange Blossom special. It's a three-run homer, and it's six to two. That ball landed on the infield of the diamond behind the right field wall. Wow, that's one of the longest home runs we've seen by anyone at Dominico Field. John Salazzo got every stitch of that baseball and he hit it deep onto the Little League diamond. There's a game going off over there. That ball was a hazard. And if we look into that bullpen, is this one hammered by JJ Dunn? High and deep and gone! J.J. Dutton with the home run. After an eight-run inning from the majors, that's how you want to respond if you're a Maple Leaf. J.J. Dutton gets them back on the board. And that is the first IBL home run for J.J. Dutton. Uh, it went well. I was just trying to rely on my fastball and my slider that I have a good feel for, but as the game progressed, I had a really good feel for my changeup, and you know what? The most important thing for me is that I was pounding the zone the entire time. What was the last time you pitched the game? Uh, other than Hamilton, the last time I started the game was actually in like 2012 when I was in high school. But I knew I could do this, so that's why I kept telling people like I can pitch. All right, we're going to bring in Jeff Lounsbury now, the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jeff, uh, it's been a while since we, we've got to chat here on Leafs Weekly. Uh, how did how did the offseason treat you? Uh, a lot of uncertainty, uh, a lot of waiting around, 
um, wasn't really sure. Um, you know, my, uh, my responsibilities with, uh, Ty and, and that group ended in October. So I was kind of waiting around from October to, um, basically January to figure out what was going to happen, uh, if the team was going to get sold, who was going to buy it. Um, so just waiting patiently. And, um, I was glad to be asked to be involved with this new group with, uh, with Rob. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of Leafs fans that are excited about this team this year because there's not a lot of new faces that they really have to learn like there's a lot of the group that we've had for you know the last three four years even beyond that coming back um, I'm wondering is that an aspect of the team that that you're proud of that you were able to put back together again this year or is it something else because I know bringing back players and retaining players is always something that's important in the IBL yeah uh, our core is a is a great group of guys first and foremost but they're good ball players too um so our locker room and and our um uh our situation like that we want to bring back the core uh, we're, we're looking to chop it down or rebuild and um you know we had to make some adjustments but uh, new ownership was kind of like what are the chances of everyone coming back i said you know probably pretty good um you know, it's even gotten better than we thought um you know, we made three more signings yesterday that haven't been put up yet by the league. Um, so we are almost done. I do believe we got four um, remaining core guys that haven't signed yet, but uh, we've been in talk with contact with them, all of them. <laughs> um, so, you know, we expect Jordan to be back. He's been very engaged again in the off season. Um, so that was a nice surprise for us uh, that, um, you know, that he's so engaged and it sounds like he's going to play. Um you know, Dusty uh, Richardson looks like he's going to come back and, and play. Um, you know, Vinicio should be back. Um, we're looking at Angel Castro coming back. So um, we're working on his visa right now. So hopefully uh, we see Angel Castro in the lineup. Um, so basically we're running it back. Um, again, what I said, I said this to the, a lot of the core guys in both mid-October, November, when the, the sale was kind of going through the process. Uh, rumors are starting to go around. I tried to keep the guys engaged as much as possible, even um, even though I wasn't involved in the sale at all. Um, Lord knows where it was going to go um, when you have a third party entity and and, and Crawford's um, and, and a family selling the team. But I did have contact with this group, um, and I said to the players, "I said I would be crazy, and I think you would be crazy not to want to be involved." Right. If, if this group gets the team. Um, so I think that's I think they're all excited to see where it goes. They're excited to be part of it. Um, they recognize that there's a large learning curve for the new ownership group. There's a lot of um, could be some hits and misses um, or swings and misses, I guess it would be. Um, you know, those things are going to happen. But I think everyone's interested in, 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 in and at least we can do is if we all show up and play and, and we all the core comes back and everyone comes back ownership doesn't have to worry about that <laughs> it's this is a this is a, a a top four team in the league right and a, a break here a extra hit here a whatever you know it, it's a good enough to, it's it's close enough to win a championships as it was yeah obviously hoping those breaks and little hits come in the playoffs as well i know mm -hmm. that something that teams gear up for so much. Uh, before we get to that, though, uh, there's some new faces on this Toronto Maple Leafs team as well. Uh, some are coming from other places in the Intercounty Baseball League. Uh, what can you tell us about some of the new faces on the Toronto Maple Leafs? Is there anyone in particular that uh, you're excited about that you think people should know more about? Yeah, I think uh, Cole Murchison is going to be uh, an interesting uh, young player. Uh, Robbie Butler uh, coached him back in uh, the Oshawa area uh, as a little guy. Uh, so Rob's very familiar with him. Rob's very excited to have him. Uh, he's a corner infielder guy. Aiden McCaskey's not returning this year. He's staying down in uh, U.S. College League. So he kind of replaces what Aiden's been doing for us for the last two years. Uh, an ability to play first, third, left, right, DH kind of thing. Um, so we kind of see him sliding into that area. Um, so we're excited about that. It, it's nice to have Charlie Towers back. Uh, or, you know, he's a Toronto kid, backup infielder. Um kind of replacing what Yoshi's role was um, in that aspect, the guy that can play basically second and short to kind of give uh, guys a break. Um, you know, so we're excited about that. Uh, I think we're most excited about the return of Angel. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we tried to get him last year late. Um, 
you know, circumstances beyond my control uh, prevented that. Um, but we thought he was coming. We thought we were going to get him in for the late push. Um, it didn't happen. So we're excited that um, we're probably, you know, we're months ahead of the, the curve on that. So it'd be nice to have Angel Castro back. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people knew that that was in the works last season, but that obviously would have been kind of a game changer, right, to the Maple Leafs pitching staff. We didn't have a you know a ton of depth last year. Uh, okay, for for the people that that don't know who An- Anel Castro is, he is just a handful on the bench, isn't he? Right, like he's just one of those guys you want to have on your team. That's what I'm told. I haven't met him, but I have talked to him often enough. He's a handful to talk through just through email <laughs> or or WhatsApp. Um, he just sent me his stats the other day from uh, him pitching down uh, in the Dominican there. He's, he's playing right now and he sent me his stats. He's top five in ERA, top five in strikeouts. Um, you know, he's, uh, I know he's a character. Um, you know, I, I did see it when I was in Hamilton. Of course we saw him and, uh, I know he's a handful. I know he's a character, uh, <laughs> you know, but you know, our, 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 uh, our locker room likes character. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of the team rallied around him a couple of years ago in one of those IBL finals runs. So the thing I remember most from Angel Castro is, uh, you know, the hill at, at Dominico Field. He'll run up and down that 10 times before the game yes. every time when he's not pitching. And uh, his dedication was just something that I thought was uh, really inspiring. I, I want to talk about some of the, the veteran guys on this team as well. I know Jordan Castaldo, you know, he technically retired from the inter-county baseball league last year uh, if you look on the website obviously we can see him kind of in, in more of a coaching role with maple leafs this year we see that from uh, justin mara as well what can you tell us about uh, the role on the team or what you think is going to happen with some of these these veteran guys on the maple leafs yeah well we had to give those guys a little bit more coaching responsibility because uh, rob joined the team so late right um he basically got hired in may uh just before the season started so we needed to have um uh, the continuity, I guess, of, of lineup and, and Jordan and, and Justin helped with that. Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, Rob had a ton of other commitments when he joined the team, which we knew about. Um, and then he got sick at the end uh, when we had hoped that uh, Robbie would be there more, a little bit more. So, and then his health. Um, so he's good now, by the way, Rob is, is healthy and good and looks great. Actually, I'm talk, trying to talk him into signing. Maybe he looked fantastic the other day when I saw him on the, on the Sunday. Um, but anyways, we had to give those guys a lot of responsibility this year. We're trying to give them less responsibility. Rob's uh, cleared up his calendar a little bit more. He's more, um, more engaged and more focused. Um, you know, but he's had more time to prepare his schedule and, and work around that. Uh, we are working on a familiar face to uh, come back and uh, help hopefully join the staff a little bit and the coaching staff that hasn't been done yet. Um, they're still trying to figure out Rob's schedule against their schedule, lay it out and, and see when uh, they can, you know, replace Rob or, and then, and then by playoff time join full time. Uh, they also have other coaching responsibilities. So hopefully uh, we can work through that. Um, if I announce that one, a lot of people will be excited about that too. Okay, well, well, we'll look forward to that coming up. I'm just wondering, um, in your role with the Maple Leafs, do you have any way to make sure that we see Rob Butler taking that bat in the intercounty baseball? League? <laughs> yeah, I tell you, he looked fantastic on, on Sunday. Uh, I joked about it, but I didn't press him on it. Um, I think he, I think he just joked about pulling something if he did it. Um, but he definitely looked like he could play. Um, yeah, I don't think it's our game plan. I, I think our roster spots will be filled up. I don't think anyone wants to be released to let Rob hit once, but we'll see. <laughs> so yeah. the, the old days, the old days of signing guys in a locker room five minutes before game time is not, um, is not part of the IBL playbook anymore. I mean, back in the day, you're looking in the parking lot and you see nine guys and, like I know I've signed over the years a couple of times just in case we're short guys. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah well, I, I've been pushing Rob Butler to give us that too. I've been getting the same response from him, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe we'll see it one time before I let you go. Uh, I know the jerseys that just came out for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Everyone's really excited about them. Hundreds and thousands of likes and retweets. Uh, it, it's incredible. The response. And I think it's because people, really like them uh, we talked before you and i are not really style connoisseurs uh but just just to get your thoughts on uh maybe not exactly uh the jerseys themselves but just just the response that that from the community on, on these new jerseys i think ownership and, and uh was very excited to realize ah this is good this is 
you gotta remember like this is all new to them right so anytime they get positive feedback and positive um engagement with the fans i think it's a good thing so they're learning right and they, they want this positive buzz they want to create an atmosphere of excitement and uh, the new jerseys have definitely created an excitement uh people are talking about the team they, you know we're they're asking about the roster a bit more um and this is march like normally historically toronto hasn't even announced a signing by now you know what i mean <laughs> um so the new ownership group is is uh, trying to create some buzz. They got a lot of work with sponsors and a lot of work with, um, you know, we were at Christie Pitts with the city on um, on Monday. Myself and Andreas, one of the owners, and talking about improvements to the park and what can be done to, to kind of uh, fix that up a little bit and, and make that a little better for the players and for the fans. So there's a lot going on, a lot going on, a lot more excitement coming up. Um, just, I guess I should ask you about the ownership group as well, because you, you've been working really closely with them. A lot of people are, are wondering, uh, you know, kind of what's been going on with the ownership group. I know right at the beginning, there was a ton of excitement. At, there still is a ton of excitement, you know, for myself and a lot of people that saw, because there's a lot of ambition, right? It seems like yeah. with the ownership group, but that's something that excites you. Uh, have you kind of got that uh, from them w w when working with them? Oh, yeah. Like the communication, like I'm on the phone with, uh, you know, with budgeting and, and and that part of it almost daily um you know going through things and ideas and then you know even like the uniform stuff to, to taking those calls and and um helping with the design and and, and they, they have weekly meetings right now so um even yourself uh, you know i know you've talked to them a couple of times and and that's never normally doesn't happen right there's normally not that kind of communication uh and transparency and that's another thing. So the players uh, met with them over uh, over teams. And I know there's an email coming out next week to kind of give guys um, an update on what's going on off the field. Um, this is the transparency that the, the players have never got before. Um, it was something that was brought to my attention when I arrived. Um, so I've tried my best to, to keep them in the loop a little bit more. Um, so it's exciting because they're excited. So when the owners are excited about something, you know, that's just going to carry down. Right. It's, um, you know, again, no, there's a learning curve, you know, there's going to be some swings and misses. And I think, I hope everyone understands that and gives them a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a break here and there. If um, something doesn't work right away, they, they got to figure this stuff out. Um, but the, the product on the field will be fantastic. Um, you know, the returning of veterans and the core group will make sure of that. They're going to try some stuff at the ballpark and, you know, I, I know they're working their butts off on, um, on all kinds of things. I don't like announcing things until they're official. Um, so I'll let them kind of, as things progress, but like I said, we did meet with the city and new uniforms that's officially out and, uh, merch on the website, which has never really been something there, um, to available to get it. I do believe fullback hats are part of that. That's something that a lot of people have asked about, um, so we're, they're moving forward. They're moving quickly. And, um, you know, hopefully everyone gets more excited to get more involved. And, um, you know, the more people involved, the better it is. Well, Jeff, uh, we appreciate you stopping by and chatting with us here on Leafs Weekly. Uh, I know you've got the whole gang back together in terms of the team. Uh, that's something that everyone's uh, really excited about. So, uh, Jeff, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. No problem. Thanks, Thomas.